everyone, <clears throat> and welcome back. Uh, yes, to answer your uh, your first question, uh, we will have no classes next week. <clears throat> um, partly because of this strange teaching from home, and partly for other reasons, we are uh, ahead of where we need to be, and so uh, so we can stop having classes. Uh, our last class will be this this Friday, and we'll have covered everything. Uh, you can use next week to work on your assignment uh, and or prepare for the, the final exam. You've got um, some example questions uh, and things to think about for the, the final exam are available on the, the course webpage. <clears throat> Okay, so last class we were talking about data structures for strings, <clears throat> and we'll keep doing that today. Uh, where we had sort of finished off last class is um, we'd seen some data structures for basic representations of basic strings. Um, so these were these P strings and these C strings. We saw that uh, P strings, which basically uh, store a pointer to the beginning of the string, the characters of the string are stored in an array, uh, and uh, in addition to the pointer to the beginning of the string, the length of the string is also stored. And then there were these uh, so-called C strings, which uh, store a pointer to the beginning of the string, and the end of the string is denoted by a special character that we usually write as a, as a dollar sign. Um, and then we looked at tries, which store uh, a set of strings, so a set S of strings over this particular alphabet. And we didn't really do this carefully, but uh, you can kind of see it here. <clears throat> so each string that you store, so here's an example where the set S of strings that you're storing uh, is there's ape, there's apple. There's pi and piglet. And you can see that because each string basically shows up as the labels of the edges on a path from the root to one of these dollar nodes. Okay. Um, so that's the way you indicate the string is stored in your data structure is if it is, then there will be a path uh, from the root to one of these dollar nodes that if you read off the labels of the edges on that path, you'll, you'll find your string. And you see that that's the case for, uh, for this particular set of strings. And if you look inside one of these nodes, in order to make it fast, <clears throat> what you have is an array uh, indexed by the letters of your alphabet. So. Um, if it's the English, lowercase English alphabet, then this would be an array of length 26. That's inside each node. So here this node has two children, one corresponding to A and one corresponding to P. So that means at position A in the array you would find a pointer, and at position P in the array you would find a pointer. Everything else would be uh, null. 
Um, and if you think about it for a little bit, you'll realize that, well, so how much space does this kind of thing take? Uh, well, every node has one of these arrays of size sigma in it. And if you get sort of really unlucky, um, and you have a big-ish alphabet, then you can find that most strings uh, basically have almost their own path uh, to, to their, their dollar sign. So, you know, if you put in a bunch of long strings, and if you put in just the right ones, you'll have a little part of your tree near the top where some strings share those paths, but then all the other ones just kind of come off and each one has its own thing. And you get this jellyfish looking thing where almost every node really just belongs to one string. So for example, in this picture, this node, this node, and this node, they, they really only belong to Apple. They're not used by any other strings. This node only belongs to Ape, this one only belongs to Pi, and this one, this one, this one, and this one only belong to, to Piglet. Um, and so that means if you add up the space, well, for every character in every string, you can basically get a node, and each node has size sigma, so the, the size of the alphabet. And that can get expensive. And that also shows up in the running time of at the very least in the add operation, which, you know, if I decide now to put in a new string like zebra, well, that immediately starts having to create a brand new path that looks like this. And I have to create this node, this node, this node, this node, this node, and this node. And all of them have, a, uh, have an array inside them that needs to have all of its entries except one set to null. Um, so you get basically the length of your string times the size of the alphabet becomes the running time. And maybe that happens for remove too. So if I remove this node now, I have to get rid of all those, uh, this string, I have to get rid of all those, those arrays. Uh, but where this sort of really shines is when you search for a string, if you want to know if it's in the try, then it's really just following a path in here. For each character in your string, you do an array lookup and follow a pointer. Um, and so that means it really only takes time proportional to the length of the string that you're searching for. And uh, again, that's kind of amazing because it has, this running time has nothing to do with how many strings are in your set. So there could be a billion strings in your set, but if you're looking for a string of length five, you only have to do five steps in this, in this tree. Um, so kind of impressive. Um, so a question about the final exam. The final exam will have the same format as the midterm. It will just be longer. Uh, again, on the very top of the web page now, you can find information about, uh, about that, as well as information about how to find out when the final exam takes place. Um, okay. So let's say we want to do better than this. Uh, so too much space and too slow. And it really looks dangly. These things are, are hard to, to draw. Um, so that, that's a try. And the data structure that I want to show you now is called a Patricia tree or try, maybe. Let's say a Patricia try. Um, this is actually supposed to be an acronym for something. Uh, it's like pattern retrieval something something. Personally, I think it's actually named after someone, but the, the creator uh, wanted to pretend that it, it wasn't. But anyway, that's, the, that's what it's called. And it's a variant of the try. Um, and some people would call it a compressed try.
And the idea is that if the problem is these long dangly paths, well, why do we need to store a whole long dangly path like this? Why can't we just have one edge um, from here to here? And instead of, uh, just instead of the label on each edge being a single character, why can't it be a whole string? So if we do that here, we'll get something like, coming out of the root, is uh, an edge with the label AP. That goes to a node where there's an edge with the label E dollar uh, and another edge with the label P L E dollar. Okay. That's this part of the tree. And now we need to put pi and piglet in there. Both of those start with pi, and uh, then there's a split. This one has an e dollar, and this one has a g l e t dollar. It's a lot more compact, isn't it? And we'll draw this sort of useless notes here. <clears throat> All right, so that's the, the idea, is that the edges should be uh, labeled with strings. Uh, inside a node, it still looks the same. So inside each node here, if you look inside, you'll see this. Actually, I don't need to draw it again. It's that picture uh, right there. There's an array in there with one of its pointers uh, a, uh, so there's a one of a position A, there's a pointer going off this way, and there's somehow this string AP is also stored at position A. Um, and similarly, uh, at position P, there's this pointer going off this way, and this string PI. Okay. So uh, that's the idea. But let's look at how we, uh, how we got there. So I think this is a, a useful thing to do. So this is the set of stuff that's stored in this uh, Patricia uh, tree, or this compressed tri. So that means at some point, I stored the string APE dollar. All right. Um, so this labels here on these edges, where are they coming from? Well, they're strings, and they're strings, the sort of the basic, the fundamental kind of strings. Uh, so what representation should we use for them? Well, there's a really natural representation we can use for them, and if it, it and using it makes things uh, much, much nicer, um, it's the following. Uh, well, we need a string AP here. Uh, we have stored, someone asked us at some point to store ape in here. So AP is just the string that we get by starting here. So I'll write this off in memory somewhere. There's an array with these characters in it, APE end of string. So we can point to that first character and remember that it's a string of length two that starts there. So that's the representation of AP. It just points off to that thing. What about this E dollar? Well, that's just a pointer to E and something telling us that it's a string of length two. So the next two characters in the array make up the, the string. Okay. And, uh, well, we've also at some point, somebody stored apple in here. So off in memory somewhere, there's this array containing the letters of the string apple. We need a label for this edge, the, the PLE dollar edge. And we can get that by referring to this and remembering that that is one, two, three, four characters. 
including the, the dollar sign. Uh, over here, uh, well, we know that we have pi stored in memory somewhere, and we also have piglet stored in memory somewhere. So we need a label for this thing, which we get by pointing to there and remembering that it is uh, one, two, three, four, five characters. We need uh, a label for this thing, which we can get by pointing to here, remembering that it's two characters. And we need a label for this thing, pi. And we could get it from either place because pi and piglet both start with pi. Um, and we'll see actually where this comes from really depends on which one of those two things was added first to the, the, the compressed try. Um, so let's say that maybe pi, or no, let's make piglet added first. So we point to there, and that's a string of length two. All right, um, so what's the main difference between this thing and this thing? Well, if we look at uh, this compressed try, we'll notice that all of our nodes are either leaves, there's four of them, or they're not leaves, they're internal nodes, but if they're internal nodes, they have at least two children. And that's something that's not happening here, right? Here's an internal node in this try that has only one child. And the reason we're getting these ridiculously long paths, the reason we can get this jellyfish-shaped try, uh, is because we have lots of uh, nodes with only one child. All right, good. Um, now, how many leaves are there in this thing? Well, each leaf corresponds to one of the strings that I'm storing. So, number of leaves is equal to the size of S. So, this, the, the number of strings that I'm storing. So that's different than over here, where somehow this was not the size of S, but actually you have to add up the lengths of all the strings in, in S, and then, and then multiply by here. So number of leaves is size of S. Uh, what about these internal nodes? How many of those are there? Well, I'll tell you that it's less than or equal to the size of s minus 1. So why is that? Uh, it's a, basically a, a fact about trees uh, that if you have uh, a tree in which every internal node has at least two children, sometimes there's more than two, but at least two children, then the number of internal nodes is always at least it's less than the, the number of leaves. Okay? And the, this is achieved exactly when every internal node has exactly two children, and then you have the uh, number of internal nodes is always exactly one less than the, the number of leaves. Right. Uh, and if you want to prove that formally, it's easy to prove by, uh, by induction. You can just, uh, well, you can take away the, take away the root and, uh, and start adding things up from there. It's not, uh, it's not hard. <clears throat> okay. Um, good. So let's see what happens when we want to, uh, 
add something. To one of these these things, uh, and let's see. Let's try and add the string apply. So we're going to try and put apply into the set of strings we're storing. <clears throat> so apply starts with an A. So we start at the root. We look in the array stored at the root to see if there's a pointer uh, leading out at position A. And there is. In fact, there's an edge leading out. And so this edge is a string of length is labeled with a string of length 2, AP. So we start comparing our string to this, uh, this, the characters in this edge, right? So the first one will always match. The reason we are crossing this edge is because we looked in here and we saw that there was, uh, that this is the edge for all the things that start with A. So that will always match. So we get a match there and there. And then we compare the second character of our string with the second character on this edge. That's a match. And then we're at the end of this string. So that means we're at this node now. All right. So here's how far we got so far when we were trying to match these, uh, these things. We got AP. There are strings already in here that start with AP, so we don't have to do anything yet. Um, now from this node, the next character is a P. We look in the array at this node and see that, yes, there's an edge co coming out of, in the array at position P. There's an edge coming out, and there's a label on that edge that has this label, PLE dollar. So we start comparing to this thing. We see P, that's a match. We see L, that's a match. But now we have a mismatch. This thing has an E. And the string that we're looking for, in fact, the string we're trying to add right now, has a Y. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, so that tells us that this edge has to go. That we, we can't have, uh, from here, we can't have an edge labeled PLE because we have different strings. We have strings that start with PL, uh, but one of them has an E next and the other one has a Y. So we're going to have to introduce a node. Okay. And we're going to have to shorten the label uh, on this, this edge. Okay. How much do we how do we shorten it? Well, we've got this label here that was of length four. We were only able to match two edges before we We've got a mismatch, so we want to shorten it to length 2. Which means that it just represents PL now. Now, here's this new node that we just created. It's got to have two different children one for the string we're trying to insert, and one for the string that uh, was already there. So the string that we are, well, let's do this in the correct alphabetical order. So the string that was already there uh, was PLE dollar. So we want this edge to have the label E dollar. Where are we going to get that label from? Well, that's easy. We had this label, which was PLE dollar, that was of length 4 before. We truncated it to length 2 because we only want the PL for here. But the rest of it is actually this thing, and it's of length 2. Right. So, so what we've really done, what really happened is there was a label 
on this edge a long one that we split into two. The first part that goes up to PL and the second part which goes to, to E dollar. This one was of length 2 because that's as much as we were able to match. And this one is of length 2 because that's what's uh, left uh, after we take the first two characters off P, uh, PLE dollar. Okay. So that gets make sure that Apple is still in, represented in this thing. And of course now there's the string that we want to actually insert, which is apply. And that means we need an edge here that has a Y dollar label. So actually here, let me. Looks like that. We need an edge with a Y dollar label. Where are we going to get that? Well, the, the caller, the person who asked us to insert this string, gave us this string. And this string is just... Uh, well, the, the, the characters of this string are stored somewhere in memory in an array. Um, so we can pull that off of there. Starting at y of length 2. And why was it starting at, uh, I mean, how do we, we get this pointer? Well, we had a pointer, I mean, we've been doing this, we were doing this as we were matching, right? We had a pointer to the beginning of the string, and we were matching characters as we went along. If we keep track of how many we, we matched, um, then we'll, uh, well, we'll know uh, where the rest of it starts, and the length, we can, you know, subtract that from the original length of the, the string. So, um, this is an example where it really pays that we're using a string representation which contains both the pointer to the beginning of the string and the length of the string because it allowed us to do this splitting operation uh, where we split PLE dollar into two strings in constant time. There was no copying of anything, uh, right? There's still only one array with this string in it. It's just we have some more pointers into it now. And if we think a little bit uh, about the running time of that, so what is the, what's the process? Well, the process is we start searching for the thing we want to insert. And one of two things happens. It could be like in this example, um, where we got halfway across an edge, and then we had a mismatch, so we couldn't cross the edge that was here, PLE dollar. We got stuck halfway. In which case, we split the edge into, uh, we split the string on the edge into two, and introduce a new node. Uh, but then we're done. I mean, that, that's it, right? You introduce the, the new node and, uh, or split the, yeah, you introduce the new node uh, that splits this edge into to two. That part of the thing is done now. And all you have to do is add one more child to this node, which is just the rest of the string you're trying to add. So it's just follow a path until you can't cross an edge and then you have to split that edge but then you're done there's no more path following after that you don't even have in fact after this point you don't even have to look at the rest of the string you're adding um, because you know that from this point at this point it differs from every other string in your set um, you just put its label on the, the edge there uh, so when we store apply do we ever actually store the APPL or only the distinct part Y? Um, can we not just discard everything but the Y? No. You don't want to do that. You want all of these things, these strings, in their entirety to be in memory living off somewhere. And we're about to see why in a, in a second. So at some point you will want the 
beginning of this, or you may want the beginning of this string. Okay. Um, but, so, so let's finish the, the, the add now. Uh, so, from what I just said, to do an add, you have to take some number of steps, some of which are uh, looking at an array entry and some of which are just matching characters in a string that's, that's on an edge. Um, but the number of steps is not more than the length of your string. And until you can't continue, and then you have to create a new node, or you might have to create a new node. Um, and, uh, but it's only one new node that you have to create, and that means you have to create an, an uh, array and set all its entries to, to zero, but it's only one of them. So instead of the length of the string you're inserting times the size of the alphabet, it's just the length of the string you're inserting. That's sort of the search part of the procedure. Uh, and then you have to create one node. So that's the, you get a plus the, the size of the alphabet instead of multiplying those two things. And actually, I, I didn't mention it here, uh, but this uh, already means that the space The number of internal nodes is the size of the alphabet. It's only the internal nodes that need these arrays. So the space is proportional to the size of the, uh, the size of the set of strings you're storing uh, times the size of the alphabet. Okay. So it's not the total length of the strings the way it is here. It's actually just the size of the set times the size of the alphabet. You need basically less than one node per, per string. Uh, okay, and then there's a sort of second thing that can happen during add, where if I was to try and do something like add, um, say pit viper then I follow the path for PI that takes me to this node and at this node I look in the array location T but there's nothing there so there's no edge coming out with a T in it when that happens I don't even have to create a new node I just have to uh, I mean, I, I just have to mark that, that there's now an edge coming out of there. And what's the label on that edge? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, T Viper. And where does the label come from? It comes from there. And it has length uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So actually you see that uh, you didn't even have to look at the whole string here, right? You saw after the first two characters you were done, it doesn't even matter what comes next. I know that I can get the suffix of this string uh, in constant time. That's one of the nice features of these P strings, uh, of this representation. Uh, and so that means I can get the, the label for this, uh, this edge in, in constant time. All right. Uh, and actually, this is a nice, when I said somehow the worst trees, the ones that have the most internal nodes, are the ones where everybody has exactly two children. Uh, and you see now why that's happening, because the reason I didn't have to create a new internal node here is that, uh, is that I, I was just adding another child uh, to, to this one. So it didn't create a, you, you didn't have to create a new internal node there. Um, and this one now has three children. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Good. Uh, so, looks complicated, uh, and it's because of all the, the pointers hanging around. And indeed, if you're doing this in a language that you have to... Uh, 
in a language where you have to do memory management yourself, this, this gets, uh, gets messy. So you'd want to have some layers of abstraction to deal, deal with this. But uh, I think you, you get the idea. So the, the question, there's a question here that says, uh, so none of the edges actually store strings, right? Only a pointer and a link. That's right. So on each edge here, which if you were to blow up what a node looks like, that means there's sort of uh, three arrays. One of them is an array of lengths. Right? So coming out from position A is uh, a string of length two, for instance. And you can find that string of length two. There's this, you know. Another array is called start that points to, uh, you know, that actually points to, to this thing. So the edges don't store strings, they just store the start of their label and the length of their label. All right. So let's try and remove something from here. Let's try and remove. Um, let's try and remove, well, an easy one would be ape. Well, to remove it, we're going to search for it. Uh, if it's there, we'll end up at a leaf in this tree, and we will have matched every character. Uh, oh, here, here's ape. We'll have matched every character along the way, right? So we match the AP, we match the E dollar, that takes us to this leaf. Um, we want this string to go away. Uh, okay, good, we'll, we'll remove ape. Uh, we want this string to, to go away. So, we're going to get rid of this node. That's fine. Now it's not represented anymore. But there is a problem. And the problem is, we got rid of this node, uh, and by doing so, that left us with this thing. It's an internal node that has only one child. And we're trying to avoid those. So we want this internal node to go away. All right, so how are we going to get this internal node to go away? Well, we basically, you know, a node of degree, a node with only one child is basically useless, right? Every time you go into it, you can only come out one way. <coughs> so you might as well just have one edge instead. So why don't we just skip that node? That's what we want to do, um, and that's what we will do. So, all right. So we we got rid of uh, this leaf, and we discovered when we did that. So we looked, you know, we, we nulled out an array entry up here that that was going to this leaf. Uh, we looked at the whole array and saw that oh, it only has one non-null entry, meaning there's only one child here. We need to get rid of uh, of this node. And we'll do that by, you know, wherever this pointer was leading to this node, well, we're going to have it point to here. But we need a label for this edge. And where are we going to get the label for this edge? So the label that we need is APPL. Where are we going to get that? Well, Here's where something cool happens, and this is the reason I said you want to keep around all of the strings that you have inserted, because, so, this thing here, uh, this, the label on the edge right now, comes from the word apple, right? Uh, that, that's, I mean, it, it, it's, it comes from this word apple, which is still in our, uh, our set, 
And what do I know about the word apple? I actually know that it starts with AP. So, and well, because the rest of the label comes from here, after AP comes PL. So the label for this new edge that I want to create, I can get just by taking this label, that's this pointer, and subtracting 2, why 2? Because this edge up here had length 2. So I subtract 2 from this thing, and I get the following. This is all spliced away. This thing is not used anymore. And I've got a label on this edge. So this thing is not here anymore. That edge that it used to be labeling is gone. Now I've got a label on this edge that uh, is the correct label. And I know that that's always going to work because every edge, I mean, every label on an edge in here comes from one of the strings in my set. And the reason it's the label for that edge is because the whole string uh, up until that point matches the whole, uh, the whole sequence of characters I see on this path. So from that leftover child, the, the one child that remains when you take away the, the second last one, you can just extract the, the label you need by, uh, you know, by subtracting, doing pointer arithmetic, just subtracting something from the pointer. So you get that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's why we, we keep these things around. Uh, there is, you, so you might ask now, well, what about ape? Can we get rid of it? Um, not necessarily, because you could imagine uh, that ape was a long string and actually something longer than this. So some parts of this array might be still used in labels, you know, along edges that you took to get down to the, the bottom of it. So you can't just blindly get rid of, uh, of ape. Um, if you want to really be able to get rid of that string, then you have to, uh, you have to do a, a bit, a significantly more work. In fact, you have to go across all of the edges that you crossed, you have to make sure that none of those were referring to this, uh, this string you're, you're trying to get rid of. Um, it's maybe easier just to, uh, to keep it around, not worry about that. Uh, and if you do have, you know, if you have a garbage collecting language like Java or, uh, or even if you do reference counting in something like C++, then once nothing needs of this anymore, it will go away. Uh, how did I choose to reassign the pointer to Apple instead of uh, Apply? I chose to reassign to Apple, and it's hard to see now, but the reason is that before, right, so here was the E dollar that I just got rid of, and here was... Uh, the uh, what have I got? Uh, a P well it's you know, it's because uh, so here's the thing that I just got rid of on this edge there was a label that was uh, PL, and that PL happened to come from Apple. 
probably because Apple was inserted uh, first. In fact, Apple was inserted first. So I just use whatever, you know, the, there was a label on this edge. That label refers to some string. I know that that string starts with AP. Um, that's why it's, uh, I mean, that's how we, we got there. So I just have to back it off. It could have come from apply. It could have come from Apple. Um, it just happened that the, the one that was already being used was the, uh, the one that was, uh, that was coming from Apple. Because at these internal nodes, uh, right, at these internal things, you know, where does the PI come from? Uh, you, that really depends which one of these strings was inserted first, right? In this case, PI happens to come from Piglet, but it also could have come from Pi if Pi was the first one inserted. So um, you, you never know really where it comes from, but uh, you, you know that, uh, I mean, you know that it, you can use it, and you know, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the point. Okay, um, good. So, all right, so that was remove. So what do we have to do for remove? Well, we find the thing, we find the leaf that corresponds to the thing we're trying to remove. That takes time only proportional to the length of the string, it's the same sort of walking procedure that we've, we've been looking for, looking at. Um, and, uh, well, then we removed it. Uh, so, you know, imagine, imagine now we're going to remove apple. Uh, so this would go away. We remove it, so it just, that's just taking away one leaf. That leaf has a parent. And we look in the parent now, we scan the whole array of length sigma, so we should account for that. And if we happen to find uh, that there's only one entry left in that array, then we, uh, we get rid of this node and do that, that skipping operation, that splicing operation. But that splicing operation takes constant time. The slow part was looking through the whole array to see if there were any, uh, to, to see if this was uh, the, the last one. Uh, okay. And if you didn't want to do that, you could even be a bit more clever. Uh, you, in addition to the array, you can always keep a counter inside this node to tell you how many children it has. And each time you null something out, you decrease that, and each time you set something from null to an actual pointer, you, you increase it, then you wouldn't have to look through the, the whole array. But it's not, it's not a big deal in any case, because once you decide that a node has to go away, you have to delete it, and depending on the language you're using, that might already take you as much time as, as looking at the, the whole node. So proportional to the length of the string plus the size of the alphabet. And, uh, you know, the, the find operation, and in tries I was deliberately vague, actually, so this isn't quite true. Uh, the, the find operation, uh, the running time actually is a bit strange, but here it's, um, it's actually fairly uh, straightforward. So find, remember, is supposed to either find the thing you're looking for or return the next biggest thing. And uh, for, uh, for that, uh, well, you just do, uh, so let, let's just do an example. Maybe we can try and find, uh, applique. So if we try and find applique, we make it all the way to here, and then we try to cross the, the eye edge, but there is no eye edge. So if we were to look in here, we would see that at position i in this array, there's nothing. But if we keep looking in this array, 
then we will eventually find that there is a, uh, a Y with something going there and that thing. So whatever that leads us to, uh, we keep you know, taking the smallest, the, the, the smallest thing in that subtree is, uh, is everything, is the, the next thing. Right. So it's definitely bigger than what we're, we were looking for. The thing we were looking for had an I at this position, and this one has a Y, and it's actually the smallest thing down there is going to be the, the smallest one that's bigger than what we're, uh, we're looking for. Uh, the other thing that can happen is you could try and look for apples, like so, uh, in which case, uh, so you get to here, you look at array position Z, you see that it's empty, and there's actually no more array positions, so that there's no way to, to get out of here. Um, and so that you're not going to find it in this subtree. You have to go up to here, and now look in this array for the, the next non-empty thing. So there's nothing that starts with APPL and is bigger than this. Um, so you want the next thing that comes uh, that, that comes after this, and in that case, it's the smallest thing in the, the next non-empty subtree. So in general, you, you try to search for a, a while, and uh, you can't continue somewhere, and if you can, you know, if you can continue from that node, that's great. If you can't, you walk up to its parent. If that one has a node off to the right, that's where you'll find it. If not, then if that one has a node off to the right, you'll find it, and, uh, and so on. Until, in the worst case, you were looking for a string in here that started with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, pigs with a Z, would take you all the way to here, um, or all the way to, to, to halfway across this edge, and you can't continue here, you can't continue here, and the answer is there's nothing in this, uh, this data structure that is larger than PIGZ. All right, um, good. Uh, okay, so I'm curious, since each edge is a pointer to the actual string stored in memory, how are the strings actually stored? Well, uh, the strings are just some arrays, you know, pieces of memory, so arrays that you have allocated when you created this string, uh, that, that's, where, that's where it is. And you just have to be careful not to deallocate it until everyone is done using it. In Java, that takes care of it for you. In C++, there's now um, reference counting uh, arrays and reference counting strings that will, will take care of that for you. So it's, it's not, uh, not a problem. Um, so little speed ups that you can do with this, uh, for instance, you, so I've described this as this thing stores in an array, which is, you should do that because then you can look up characters instantly, but uh, you could also, in addition to the array, store a linked list of um, somehow the non-empty, the non-null array entries. Why would you want to do that? Well, that helps uh, for this find operation, for example, when I know that I just crossed an edge A but didn't find what I was looking for, now I need to go to the next, uh, next non-empty thing. Um, so it's a little bit, you know, there's a, it makes things a little bit more work and a little bit more to store, but it allows you then to go directly from some uh, index or some index in this array that has a pointer at it to the next index in this array that has a pointer at it in constant time without having to look through the, the whole alphabet. And then you'll see if you do that, then even if you have to you search for something and find, you don't find it, you have to look up here for the next one, maybe it doesn't exist, look up here and look up here, all that will still only take time that's proportional to the length of S. And other things you can do, um, 
if you want to know what are all of the strings that start with something, so, you know, what are all of the strings in here that start with A, for example? Well, I just follow the path for A, I get this far, halfway across this edge, and I know everything in this subtree starts with A. So all I have to do then is traverse this tree and report all the strings that are, uh, are stored there. Uh, how long will that take me? Well, it'll take me uh, the size of this tree, but how big is this subtree? Well, it's, it's twice the number of leaves. So I can tell you all the strings that start with A in a time that is just equal to the, the number of strings that start with, uh, with A. Okay, good. So that's all fine and nice and fine. So we get really good, uh, I mean, this is good space. It is uh, excellent search times. We can find things. And this time, unlike here where we had to do some fudging for when you're not exactly finding things, you can really find the successor, uh, the, so the, the next largest thing. You can find all of the strings that start with a particular uh, string. That's, that's no problem. Um, so you can really do, uh, do what you, you want to do. And the space is, is reasonable. So there's the compressed try is a really good data structure for storing uh, a collection of strings if you want to be able to, so a set of strings, if you want to be able to add and remove things from the, the set. So basically, the running times are just proportional to uh, the length of the string you're dealing with plus the, the size of the alphabet. And for searching, the size of the alphabet doesn't even matter. OK. <clears throat> so I said that we would go back and forth a little bit between data structures for storing uh, one string and data structures for storing many strings. <clears throat> so these things are nice uh, because they, I mean, this is for storing many strings, all these different strings here, and I can look for, for things in there. But let's think about storing one string, like one really big string. Like maybe the string is the concatenation of every HTML file available on the World Wide Web today. That's a string, right? I mean, each file is a string, and if I concatenate them, then I, I just get a, a really long string. So why would anyone want to do that? Well, if you think about it, um, that's kind of what Google does, right? They, they're storing every HTML file um, that, that that exists, and uh, what are they doing with it? Well, they let you do these kinds of queries where, uh, you know, they'll tell you if you type in some search term, and somehow that allows them to see what are all the HTML files that contain that search term, and, you know, then it ranks them and does a bunch of other stuff. But fundamental thing is they, they want to find all of the files that contain that, that search term. And so that brings you to uh, the next data structure, which is called the suffix tree. Uh, so let's say, and it stores one string. It's a really long one. There it is. Uh, why is it called a suffix tree? Well, it's called a suffix tree because it's a tree. In fact, it's one of these Patricia trees. And it stores every suffix of this string. What are the suffixes of this string? Well, the whole thing is a suffix. So. One of the suffixes is the entire string, but 
this is another suffix. There's another one. And so on, all the way down to the last couple of them. So these are all the suffixes of this string. Okay. Um, and you know, it's not that long because I can't make it that long. What do you do with these suffixes? Uh, well, you take each one of them and you put it in a Patricia try. So, first of all, um, if this is a really long string, then, right, so if this is a string of length n, then the total length of all these suffixes are, this one has length n, this one has length n minus 1, this one has length n minus 2, then my, that's terrible, right? That is quadratic. So, the total length of all the suffixes is about n squared over 2. But, uh, remember, I have this whole string, and I have a string representation that allows me to uh, make new strings from existing ones using only a pointer and a length. So when I say take all the suffixes of this thing, I mean, you know, you really have one array that contains this thing, and you have one pointer that looks like this, uh, that says, yeah, the string that starts here and has length n, and then there's a string that starts here and has length n minus 1, and then there's the string that starts here and has length n minus 2, and there's another one that starts here and has length n minus 3, and so on, all the way up to there's a string that starts uh, here and has length 2, and a string that starts here and has length 1. So even though all the suffixes, if you add up all their lengths, they're long, they're about n squared over 2, you can represent them all using just this array, which has length n, and these n uh, pairs, where each pair is a pointer and a length. So you can st store all these strings in O of n space. Now, I'm going to say, take all of these strings and put them into a suffix tree. So you're going to get a suffix tree, and uh, well not a suffix tree, a Patricia tree. So it's going to have a root that has a uh, t, H, it's going to be an R, uh, and there's going to be a H here, and well, there's going to be, I mean, it's, it's going to be big, but it's going to store all of these strings. Um, right, so why did I say that there's a T, and that thing with a T leads to a to this branching node with an H and an R, well, because it stores this string, which is a T followed by an H, and it also stores this string somewhere in here, which is a T followed by an R, so that means that yeah, you can follow one edge that's labeled with a T, but then there's, you know, some of the strings after that start with an H and continue with an H, and some of the other ones continue with an R, so that's why that that branches there, but just imagine you went through the huge effort to build this uh, this monstrous thing, and you see why you can't draw them. Even for short strings like this, the example gets ex 
extremely complicated quickly, but we can reason about it knowing what we know. Um, how many leaves will this thing have? Well, the number of leaves is the number of strings you're storing. I'm storing each of these suffixes of the string of length n, and the string of length n has n suffixes. Okay, so we get n leaves. That's good. What about the internal nodes? We have at most n minus 1 internal nodes. All right. That's good. So that means the space for this whole thing, well, it's the number of internal nodes times the size of the alphabet. Number of internal nodes is about n, at most n minus 1. So that's the space uh, for the arrays that are in the nodes. What else is there? Uh, well, there are edge labels in this tree. How much space do those take? Well, what the, the edge labels from this tree, they come from the strings that I actually inserted. That's the way Patricia tries work. Uh, that means they're actually, all the edge labels here refer just to this one single array. So, unlike this picture where we had to push these things around all over, if I were to complete this picture, it would be one tree with n minus, at most n minus one internal nodes and n leaves, and the edge labels, each edge label, would just be a pointer uh, into this string and a length. In fact, yeah, so just a pointer into that thing and a, and a length. Uh, how many of those pointers and edge labels do I need? Well, not more than the number of edges in this tree, and you can count the number of edges in this tree is not more than uh, 2 times n. Why? Why? Because... Uh, the number of nodes is less than 2 times n, and each node has only one parent, and if I just count for each node the edge leading to its parent, that counts every edge in the, the tree. So the, the number of edges in the tree is not more than the number of nodes, and there's only 2n minus 1 nodes at most. So, so the whole space is just, I mean, the, the worst part is the storage for the nodes, uh, the storage for the string is just one array of length n, and then some, you know, the, the pointers on the, the edges, but that's, that's okay. So this is a small structure. Uh, what's it good for? Well, uh, Patricia tries, if you forget about adding and removing, they support this find operation. Um, and they also support searching for something uh, like a, a prefix search. So, for instance, if I were to look in here and search for the string my, well, I would find it would actually be in here. And how do I know that it's in here? I know that it's in here because there's a suffix that starts with my. Okay. So if I did that search, I don't know, something would happen. I would cross uh, only one M here, so I actually I would, th there's an edge coming out of here that has my uh, on it. Uh, in fact, it has my in a space and whatever, uh, and then something, you know, some stuff underneath. So there would be an edge coming out of the root that actually is labeled with, with my. What does that mean? Uh, well, that means that there is a suffix uh, of this thing that starts with my, 
And that means actually that the word Maya appears somewhere in this string. Right? So the technically the way to say that is every substring is a prefix of a suffix. So the substring my is the prefix of this suffix. It's the, the two-letter prefix of this suffix. Patricia tries, let me store, let me search on prefixes. And so if I store every suffix, that means I can search for any substring that might be in here. And if I do that, you know, I, I'll, in this example, I would end up crossing, and there's an edge that actually has my and a space in it, and maybe more stuff, but in general, if this was really long, it, my might appear many times uh, in this string. Uh, so there'd be a, in general, there'd be a subtree down here, but that subtree corresponds, you know, the leaves in that subtree, each one of them corresponds to a suffix that begins with my. So if I traverse that subtree and look at each of these leaves, what I will find is every position in my string where my occurs. Each leaf corresponds to exactly one position where that substring occurs. And I can do that for any substring. So, uh, um, this sounds important, right? This says that you give me the biggest string you want, all the data ever, uh, I can store it in a data structure whose space is linear in the length of that string times the size of the alphabet. And if the alphabet is too big, you can always do these tricks of breaking the alphabet up into smaller chunks, right? Every string can be thought of as a binary string if you want to have an alphabet of size 2. So you can play with the size of the, the alphabet. Um, but the point now is anything I want to search for. So this thing can be enormous. Everything ever written by, uh, by humans, that could be the string, the concatenation of everything ever written by humans. And I can instantly ask uh, for any word if that word has ever been written before. Or for any sentence. Did anybody ever write this sentence down before? And I'd follow a path in this thing and either I wouldn't get to the end of the thing, I wouldn't find the thing that I'm searching for, or I would get to, you know, I'd be able to follow the whole path for the thing I'm searching for. That would tell me, yes, uh, somebody has written this before. If you want an example um, of where somebody has written this before, well, you just have to look at the, the edge that you're currently crossing or that you just crossed when you were done. That will point to somewhere in here where that string, I mean, that, that'll point, I'm actually be more careful. If I was searching for my, I would end up finishing at some edge which has a pointer to the space that comes after my. And if I subtract two from that pointer, I'll find the location of, uh, of my. And why two? Because the string I was searching for was of length two. So it'll give me an example of where it occurs and if I want, I could even find every place in the whole string that it occurs just by traversing the subtree that's there. So, um, the first thing, in ex finding an example of where it occurs takes only time proportional to the length of the string you're looking for, uh, independent of how big the text is, and if it exists, it'll find it, uh, and give you an example of where, where it it appears in that string. And if you want all of them, then it's the length of the string you're looking for plus the time it takes to traverse the tree, which is actually proportional to the number of, uh, of things in the, the sort of the number of strings that you, uh, uh, the, the number of occurrences of that string. Um, and if you want something smaller, like, you know, I don't, I, I want not just one example, but I want 20 examples, then you just traverse that tree until you've seen 20 leaves. There's 20 examples for you. Um, okay, so 
uh, all that to say, and this this is the the part that um, should somehow be a little little mind blowing. Uh, there's a linear space structure that can store, well, in fact, Google is kind of doing this, uh, the entire contents of the, let's say, the web or every English book ever written. And you can query any sentence or any word uh, and ask, does that word or sentence appear anywhere? Has anybody ever written this before? Uh, you know, if you're interested in, uh, you know, being an author, and you would like to be make sure you're a creative author, just get one of these Patricia tries. Uh, and, you know, if you want to know if your sentence is boring, like many other people have written such a sentence before, you can ask the Patricia try. Uh, it can tell you how many times people have written it before. It can tell you uh, whether it's completely unique. Um, and uh, and it, only in, it only takes as long as it takes you to write out to specify the, the sentence. So just the, the length of the thing you're interested in searching for. All right. So, um, so that's suffix trees. I was going to talk about suffix arrays, but I think I'll, I'll skip it. Uh, the, the point being, uh, the suffix trees are great if you have the space, but they are still uh, a pointer-based data structure. Uh, there is overhead. I mean, there's this overhead, but there's also, you know, two pointers for every node. And now you know that the number of nodes is about the same as the length of the string you're storing. Um, and, you know, if that's terabytes and terabytes long, then, uh, then that can get overwhelming. Uh, there's another structure called the suffix array, which is, uh, for a string like this, it's just an array of integers that you that tell you if you took these n suffixes and sorted them all, um, what would the smallest one be? Or where does the smallest one start? So I think uh, is right. The smallest letter in this set here is I. Uh, it occurs in three places. This one has an S after it, this one has an S after it, this one has an N after it. So the first thing in the suffix array would be the index there. And it would tell you, yeah, this, somehow the lexicographically smallest uh, suffix is this one that starts with ing dollar. Uh, and then the next ones would be, uh, I think it would be this one, this occurrence of i, and then this one, that's this occurrence of i. So just a compact way of s having all the suffixes uh, stored in sorted order. Um, and well, once you have that, then you can search for, uh, for anything using binary search. So it doesn't give you a running time like this. It gives you something like, uh, if you do it carefully, um, Using a suffix array, you get s plus uh, log n to search for any string. Uh, and the advantage is that all you need is one array that stores this permutation and one other array that stores a little bit of extra information that lets you, uh, lets you uh, get this this running time so basically just just two arrays of integers all right so that is a good place to uh, stop for today um, all right and I'll just look for questions uh, since each edge is a pointer to the actual string stored in memory how are the strings actually stored I think I answered that it's just a uh, they're just off in, in memory somewhere. They've been allocated on the, the heap. Uh, yeah, and little is an understatement. Good. So that is it for today. And next class will be our last class. I will cover something that um, 
is useful in databases, but uh, it's called B-trees. But don't worry, because uh, you have basically seen it before. Um, it's a generalization of two four trees, but that's useful for storing lots of data on slow storage media. We'll, we'll cover that next class. Thanks for showing up. So question, uh, could you put suffix trees with a Patricia tree to speed up add and remove? Um, the two don't really work uh, together. So if you mean, can I take this giant string and add and remove things from it and have it uh, reflected over here in the suffix tree? Uh, no, that is not going to work because each time you change this string, then uh, you've really not just changed one, one thing, but you've changed every suffix that starts before the, the thing you've changed. So it, any modification to this string will somehow totally mess up this, uh, this structure. Uh, the only exception is if you keep adding on to the end of this string, then Maybe you could manage that, but maybe it's even easier to add to the beginning of this string and, and update the, the suffix tree there. Uh, yeah, I guess if you, if you keep adding things to the beginning of this string, then, uh, then that would just be whatever you're adding, uh, whatever the length of the thing is you're adding, that's how many more new suffixes you, you have. So it's not useful for data that changes, but if you have data that's accumulating, like more and more web pages show up every day, uh, then you can sort of rebuild this, uh, this index with the new stuff to include the new stuff um, efficiently. Ah, um, you could, uh, if you wanted to store the edge labels uh, in some other way, like using a, a Patricia tree or, um, or something other than a, a P string, uh, you could do that. Uh, but I, I don't know that you would get any advantage. I don't know that there'd be any advantage. Uh, yeah, possibly uh, if, if you had a scenario where you wanted to uh, look for a string, so uh, yeah, let me look for a string that, or something that starts with a string and then ask if it contains something inside it. But I think you would get all of that just from one suffix tree of the, the whole set. 